Hi there, this is Erne from Modelur. Today I'm going to talk a bit about uh, parametric urban design inside SketchUp. One might think that maybe SketchUp is not the go-to tool when it comes to parametric urban design. As we'll see a bit later, uh, Rhino and Grasshopper are more popular for it, but using Modeler, one can easily uh, benefit from using parametric approach also inside SketchUp. Now, before digging into the topic of parametric urban design inside SketchUp, I want to just quickly shed some light on the parametric urban design itself. Uh, as you can see in this image, we have two basic approaches of parametric urban design. One is algorithm-based, meaning that the final results are completely calculated by computers based on the algorithms that humans provide. We sometimes call this also generative design. On the other hand, we have a human-based approach, which is kind of a semi-automatic, where, where the computer only assists human uh, in working a lot more efficiently, but still while doing this or, or crafting the space manually. Now, there are benefits to both of these approaches and also the negative points. For the algorithm-based, uh, the key benefit is that it's super fast, but only once it is set up. Usually, it takes quite a lot of time to set up the algorithm to work for specific development. On the other hand, this algorithm-based approach is quite hard to control because there are many constraints and parameters taken into account to produce the results and the end result can only be as good the, as the algorithm driving it. They, are, they, are, they can be hard to control because they basically pro produce you thousands of possible options which you can then choose uh, from which you need to basically choose which is the optimal one and then drive it further. On the other hand, the semi-automatic approach or human-based approach is a bit slower, but nevertheless a lot faster than if we do everything completely manually, but it gives you a lot higher level of control over the design and the quality. Usually it's also easier to use and more intuitive as it is closer to how urban designers usually work. Uh, but when it comes to speed, it cannot compete with generative approach. Uh, but then it's up for the designer to decide which of the approaches uh, they want to use. Sometimes, or what we recommend is starting with algorithm-based, so basically that you quickly produce some results. And then we believe that in the end, you still need... Uh, uh, or, or the development still needs human hand to actually craft the high quality living environment. Uh, that's why in Modeler we offer both, both approaches. We now have the massing generator, which quickly produces you some basic results just to give you a feeling of the density, but then it is mo mostly focused on, on the, this part where human designer crafts the, the space itself. Now, going back to the topic of parametric urban design, this is usually the, something that uh, we um, think of when talking about parametric urban design. Usually it can be done by using Grasshopper and Rhino, creating these complex or at least complicated algorithms that produce in the end some final results. Then for Whenever we work on new development, we need to adapt this algorithm so that they will produce the results that are acceptable for a specific site. But this is not always the case. And maybe it is not a good definition of parametric urban design because what parametric urban design actually is, is just using different kind of, of parameters to define new developments. And the easiest way to, to explain it uh, compared to the traditional design is actually using this image, where you can see with traditional metric approach, we need to input dimensions of the buildings to get to some volume that defines the building. On the other hand, the parametric approach 
offers direct end values which we can work with to achieve the same results but we have a higher level of control and also the job can be done a lot faster because as you can see on the left hand side the metric building they, they both look the same but on the left hand side one is defined as 20 by 20 meters and then each story has its story height on the other hand with parametric design we can just define what is the gross floor area of the building we want to have and what is the number of stories and then the com computer calculates what should be the actual dimensions that fit these requirements. Now, one might ask also what is the benefit of using the parametric approach when compared to traditional way of doing it. Uh, and in Modeler, we have also made uh, research on that. So there are some clear benefits of why using parametric design over the, over the traditional uh, modeling using using just the traditional units so one clear benefit here is to save a lot of time which you can then uh, funnel back into creating more design options uh, and, and more design uh, iterations and respond faster to your clients feedback another clear benefit is that you have a higher level of control as you can see in this image, where we have researched how hard it was for the participants to get to the right FAR, which is the using the, uh, the just the regular or traditional metric approach, you can see the blue line. It was quite hard for them to get to the right FAR, which was set to be 1.5. And as you can see, most of them were either above it or below it. It was really hard for the participants to get to the exactly FAR. And this was at the same time where they were using more time to achieve this result. On the other hand, when they were using the parametric approach, as you can see with the red line, the results were much closer to where they need to be at FAR 1.5. Then the third benefit is also that parametric approach uh, helps you make less mistakes. In this case, uh, Modeler, for example, has an integrated verification of distances between buildings. And what we tested here is how many mistakes due to the buildings being too close together were made. Again, using the manual approach, uh, quite a few users put some buildings too close together while when the, these warnings in, uh, integrated into the software that warn you about possible mistakes uh, diminish this, this kind of uh, misplacements of the buildings. Now, the last thing that we did this during this research is also checked if now this benefit of working faster and working, working uh, more within the limits of what is supposed to be developed somewhere has any influence on the quality of the design. If we work faster, do we make uh, uh, worse quality of the design? And the research has shown that this is not the case. In fact, what the research has shown is that the end result mostly still depends on the designer itself so on the human not on the computer computer is just a tool that helps you get job done faster now talking a bit about this uh, theory behind it let me move over to sketchup and show you how you can use parametric urban design inside it so the first thing that i'll do in this model where i already have some context and city blocks in uh, I want to just quickly create a building uh, as I would typically do it inside SketchUp. So let's go with 20 and 20 meters uh, size, one that I've shown you before. Um, I've just created the square footprint of the building. And now to create a volume, I need to go here, uh, use the push-pull tool, type in, for example, four meters, enter. I have my first story then I can add some more, like three meters, enter, three meters, three meters, and so on. And I can, this way I can easily add some more stories to it. And here in the entity info, I can see that my size of the building is actually 400 square meters. Now 
I want also to group this building because uh, if I'm using any rotation, then uh, I, I want to have this scaling working well uh, and in line with the bounding box of the building. Um, but now what I want to do is I want to check how quick I can create this kind of building using parametric tools. So I will just create a square shape. Um, let me just go to something like that. It can be 10 by 10 meters something like that. I will just hit create building and I have my building. Now, this building obviously is not 400 square meters of built up area. So I'll just go here, type in the value and I have the same size of the building. Obviously with this one, I need to add my, one more story to it so that it will be the same volume and it looks the same. But right now, one of those two buildings is actually parametric while other isn't. So, for example, if I want to go here and change these buildings now to three stories, the way I can do it using the parametric approach is I can just type in the number, like three stories, and everything gets calculated on the fly and updated. Now, if I want to do this using the manual approach, I need to enter the building, I need to select those faces, cut them out, and I have them. Now, talking about the values, I instantly see what the values here are. Actually, I can go and type in 500 and modeler will automatically calculate what should be the size of this building. So if I go here, I see that right now the size is 22.36 square meters by 22.36. For this one, I would actually first need to go to the calculator, calculator and calculate what should be the dimensions to get to 22.36 and only then adjust the building so that it would fit this required gross floor area or built up area. On the other hand, what I can also do using the parametric approach is let's go back to 400 so that they are again of the same size and let me actually also align them better with the city block. Let's go here, something like that. I'll use the SketchUp's built-in uh, this inference tool that aligns them to buildings, so they work better now. But now let's say that I want to make this building actually a bit uh, narrower because it's too wide to be too wide to be residential building. So what I can do if I'm using the parametric approach, for example, I can lock this building in terms of the built up area here and then just change it in one direction and modeler will change it automatically in another, keeping its built up area where it was. So if I wanted to do this using the manual approach, for example, let's go with 14 meters, I would again need to calculate the another dimension. So this one is now 14 meters and this one here, um, let's go to this one, is 80.75. If I wanted to achieve the same 400 square meters of built up area uh, for this building, I would need to calculate both of the values manually before, before getting to the actual dimension that needs to be applied to the building to, to have the 400 square meters, because right now it has 280 square meters. Now, there are also some other benefits. So for example, what I can also do uh, using just changing of parameters, I can quickly set different story heights. So let's go here with this one, maybe 2.7, and they can be adjusted immediately. If I go here to six, you can see that these stories actually here, they are 2.7 meters high. And if I change the building uh, or the story height back to three meters, you can see that the value is instantly updated. You can imagine how hard it is to update uh, the building if it's just the raw geometry, which we need to we, which we need to change using the standard dimensional units. On the other hand, what the uh, what this kind of approach also uh, offers is to use the parameters that cannot be defined uh, using metric. Uh, dimensions. So, for example, the construction here. Right now, let me go here to 
this one I will move the building here okay so something like that and I will open a layout that I have already created actually I have it here text alternative oops let's go here alternative one I'll just select it explode and click on the create buildings now the buildings that are created here uh, as you can see they have different uses they have different heights this is because of this interactive 3d zoning technology built into modeler which adjusts buildings automatically um, so i just need to make a few fixes because also this city block is also red uh, meaning that at least one of the uh, uh, rules of the city of the zoning ordinance is exceeded in this case it's it is the far so i'll just scale the building a bit down until it fits the required far and of course if needed i could go here to see the far for example right now it's 1.86 uh, again i'm i'm now missing 0 0.14 far so i can just go here and quickly get to the right value maybe this is still some room so 56 yeah let's go with 760 so right now we are almost at the limit or at the limit of the far with this building so if we make it a bit larger than that the city block will become red and I will not be allowed to do this kind of building but right now I'm at the limit of the FAR so speaking about additional parameters we can easily use for example construction year to define the phasing of the buildings I'll go here to 2022 and for these two buildings I will define the parameter of construction year to 2025 for example they have disappeared because in the survey panel we can also see the development timeline uh, which currently is set to 2022 but if i slide it to 2025 we can see that buildings reappear so this way we can easily manage the model also in regards to the phasing then on the other hand there are also some additional features like um, uh, creating terraces and then again using the parametric approach for example if i create a building like that i can still change it let's go here to maybe four stories you can see that it has some built-in intelligence with which keeps the uh, these terraces on the top of the building so if even if i change the building to some other story uh, count that is uh, different the terraces stay at the top of the building so this way the parametric approach can be a really efficient way to quickly model the development and get to the design you want in the fastest possible time thank you for watching and hope to see you next time bye bye